got a request to talk about what it's like to be a highly sensitive person and dealing with people who are judgmental or people who have things to say about your prison relationship. So if you're interested, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I will pop a link to it right up there. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this really painful, hopefully, one-shot deal. Okay, let's get started. I am a very highly sensitive person, which I think is a blessing and a curse. It took me my whole entire life to get to the point where I found the positives in it because it's kind of a pain in the ass to be a highly sensitive person. We feel everything. We get in our feelings about everything and we think and overthink and ruminate and rehash every single thing and it's exhausting. But at the same time, it's a good thing because we're the feelers. We're the ones that are compassionate. We are the lovers and the moms and the givers. And we really know how to get in touch and communicate on a very deep, soulful level. Usually more than our less sensitive friends and loved ones. A lot of times I can get in my feelings when people are judging me where it bothers me and it hurts me, but sometimes I'm also on a really sensitive day, I get angry and I'll lash out and I will claw at somebody because just because I'm sensitive doesn't mean that I melt down and I cry every time something bothers me. Sometimes I get passive aggressive. Sometimes I get really bitchy and snippy and somebody will leave me a comment on the wrong day and I will attack. And then on a different day when I'm not as in my feelings, maybe not as hormonal or whatever it is, I could just look away and be like, okay, whatever. You have your opinion. It does not bother me. Leave me alone. So it's not necessarily for me personally that I'm sensitive in a way where I turn into a baby because of everything and things hurt me as much as yes, that happens more often than not. But there's other times where me being a highly sensitive person means that what you said rubbed me the wrong way and I'm going to go from zero to Jersey girl in half a second. Hold my heels, hold my hoops, we're gonna fight. Let's talk through some coping mechanisms. I'm just really basing this off of what I have found has worked for me. I don't have any background in psychology or anything like that, so just total disclaimer. These are my opinions. These are what has worked for me as I've navigated life and I, as I've navigated prison wife life for the last 10 years. None of this is said by a doctor, none of this is backed by medicine, but I've been doing this for a really long time and I've been dealing with and coaching prison wives for a really long time. Take it for what it's worth with a grain of salt, I guess. I don't know. People have accused me of base things off facts and not off of your opinions. Well, it's my channel, so I'm sharing my opinions, but I will add a disclaimer from now on that this is my opinion. Okay? Okay. Glad we're seeing eye to eye. You don't like it, there's the door. You don't have to watch this video. But if you like it, see highly sensitive person coming out and over explaining myself, case in point. Who cares if somebody said that I should state facts and not my opinion? That is their own opinion. As highly sensitive people, we need to protect our bleeding little hearts. We do. Doesn't it feel so immature to say you hurt my feelings? But it's true, our feelings get hurt so much more quickly than the average person. We're more sensitive, it just happens. So what that means for us is, we don't owe our story to anybody. You don't have to justify yourself and tell everybody your personal life, anything about your relationship. I always use this example. Your boss wouldn't come into the office one day, probably, and just announce to everybody that they manage, hey, I'm getting a divorce. It just doesn't happen. That's just not something that people talk about. You don't owe it to people to talk about your personal life. It's called personal for a reason. It's private. It's up to you when and if you want to share that information. Empower yourself. Empower yourself. I just got this brand new shirt at Target for $2.50 on the clearance rack. Let's talk about that for a second. I went to go pay and I had to flag over the cute little overworked Target worker. And I told him, I said, this shirt was on the clearance rack, but I can't find a tag on it anywhere because I was at self-checkout. And he was looking and he was like, hmm, and he just put in 250 and I was like, oh my God, we are besties. Pays to be nice to somebody because I was talking to him about how 
the store was so empty and there was nobody in there, but then you go to get online and everybody must have wanted to pay at the same time because there's like 55 people online and the poor kid was being pulled in a hundred different directions and he was like, yeah, it's funny, right? And then he gave me the shirt for 250. So anyway, I had a conversation with Adam really early on because I felt like if I didn't sing from the rooftops that we were together and tell everybody about our relationship that I was in some weird way betraying him. And he was the one that let me off the hook. He said, that's absolutely not true. First of all, you don't owe that to anybody ever. But second of all, we are very non-traditional. We are very non-conventional. And unfortunately, we're in a type of relationship where there's a lot of stigma around it. And people already have their preconceived notions. And a lot of times, you're not gonna be able to change those people's minds. And people can be aggressive when it comes to enforcing their opinions about criminals and people who are with criminals towards you. So in order to keep yourself safe and healthy, you have to make sure that you are being very cautious on who you share your information with. Protect yourself, I'm talking physically, from somebody abusive physically, but at the same time, protect your bleeding little heart. You don't have to tell anybody that. That is not betraying your loved one by not telling somebody that you are in a relationship with somebody inside, by not telling somebody about the, your private life. Keep it private protect yourself. The other thing is you want to know your audience. Who are you speaking to? A lot of times people just want to poke at you. And as highly sensitive people, we're the ones that absorb it. And often we don't stand up for ourselves and we don't say anything and we don't fight back. So people know, bullies know who they can pick on and who they can't. And often we're on the receiving end of that. So you don't have to talk to those people. First, you're going to protect yourself. You don't have to tell them the story. But then second, stay away from those people. Know your audience. Know what you you should and should not say to people. And again, it is okay to bite your tongue and not share. Stay away from people that just want to poke. I put myself out there online and I expose myself to the cruelest, nastiest, meanest, most aggressive, soul-crushing comments people could ever say. I have a whole video planned to respond to some of the hate messages that I've received just because a lot of them in hindsight are funny. But you have to grow a thick skin in doing this. And I could say this, in the beginning, I would cry over some comments. It doesn't mean that they're easier to read now, they still hurt. You grow a skin throughout it, but I could tell you, it's human nature to fixate on the negative because as highly sensitive people, it hurts us more to feel like people don't like us. It hurts us more to feel like we're putting something out there that is received in a negative manner by other people. We will see one negative comment in a sea of a hundred positive comments and we will fixate on that negative one. Even if it's not true, we will fixate on that one and just ignore the fact that there were a hundred other really nice, beautiful things that people said about you. You get stuck on that negative one and then you start obsessing over it. That could just be the result of somebody's bad day. Or it could be the truth and that's okay. What can you learn from it? What can you do differently in the future? What positive can you make out of that? And then how can you let it go? It's not easy, but don't put yourself in the situation of being on the receiving end of those things if you could help it. People on the internet are cruel. It took me a really long time. I left YouTube for seven or eight years because I had to figure out how and if I wanted to continue putting myself in that line of fire every day. And I've learned and I've grown. I'm in my 40s at this point, so shit or get off the pot at this point in my life. But you don't have to subject yourself to those negative comments. And here is, here's a trick that I learned along the way. Start a file and keep all of those positive comments that you get in a folder in your emails. You can print them out and keep a physical binder of them, make a fun scrapbook. So this way, when you get the negative ones, you go to that happy file and you reread the good ones, because what we as highly sensitive people do is we will reread and rehash and we will dissect every single word in that negative comment, let it go, read it, it's done, take what you need from it, learn the lesson, then go to the positive ones and I want you to read at least, at least 
five of those. And if you only have one, which over time you should have a lot because highly sensitive people do a lot of really nice things for other people. We just do. It's part of our nature. We love that because we know what it feels like. We're so sensitive. We know what it feels like when things make us feel good. And we want to share that with other people and make them feel good. So I guarantee you have more than five, but even if you have one, read that five times. And if you don't have any, email me and I will help you. I will send you something nice about you because there's something positive about each and every one of you. The other thing is stay away from the drama. Don't go online and engage in the bullshit. Don't start conversations if you're not in a good place. You don't have to be the martyr. You don't have to take on the role of advocate or criminal justice warrior or I'm gonna be the one to save him if you're not in a space for that. Know your attributes, know what you're good at, and know what is okay to let somebody else who's really good at it take control and move forward. You don't have to save the world, my love. Know what you should do and know when it's time to retract and protect your energy. You don't have to put yourself in the line of fire. You don't. I understand that you want to advocate. Maybe not today though. Maybe today you just need to sit in a quiet room and protect yourself and your heart. That's okay. You also don't have to be the one to change everybody's mind. Some people's minds will not be changed. They're already made up and they're just looking to push their agenda on other people. You don't have to engage with those people. Don't. It's just not worth it to you. Protect your poor little bleeding heart and don't engage. As highly sensitive people and empaths, we want to absorb it all. We want to do it all. We want to take the pain off of everybody else. It's just in our makeup and our nature. Know when it's the right time to do things. So as a very highly sensitive person, we're very sensitive to everything, including hormones and swings of hormones throughout the month. So there might be a time that's just not right for you to do something. Hold off and do it when you're feeling a little bit better. Do it when you feel a little bit more stable, when your mood and your emotions aren't all over the place, spiking and crashing. In fact, I did a really, really, really like life changing, career changing, oof, amazing interview two days before I got my last period. And I was so down and out and kicking myself about it because I felt like I did the worst job ever. And what I should have done was said, listen, it won't fit into my schedule to do it until next week. Let's schedule it for then. It would have been four or five days later and I would have been a different person. Thank God it worked out great because as a highly sensitive person, I beat myself up for not being at the top of my A game. So the point in sharing that with you is one, it's probably not as bad as you think when you're beating yourself up for something because you're being too sensitive, but two, you don't have to do things at certain times and disengage when you're sensitive to things going on in your life like hormones or like bad news of denials or him going to the hole or something like that. You also want to limit your intake of things. So I have this weird thing as a highly sensitive person. Let me know if you have the same issue, but when something disastrous happens, God forbid a school shooting or something like that, I will sit there all day at work and I will watch every single news break. I will watch every single news break. I break three times in a row. I will watch every single news station. I will listen to it all day long. I'll look at all of the photos weeks later. I'll listen to podcasts with the parents of the victims to feel how they were feeling. And I absorb, I absorb, I absorb. And it's weird. I don't know why I do it. It's like I have to try to take their pain off of them. I have to try to feel their pain with them to help them through it. It's bizarre, I know. But I had to learn to disengage. So limit your news, limit your social media, limit the radio. Here's a big one. You don't have to read that newspaper article or that online journal or his court brief over and over and over and over again and cry just to pour salt in your own wound. That's not gonna make it better for anybody. You're not absorbing anything off of anybody else. All you're doing is just 
hurting yourself further. Highly sensitive people get overwhelmed. It's just part of our makeup. We need to know when to unplug and look away. Know your triggers because a lot of times highly sensitive people are so used to dealing with being in pain all the time. We find this weird comfort in it because we know we can handle it, but you don't have to be in pain. Pouring salt in your own wound hurts. Don't do it. When you receive hate about your relationship and judgment about your relationship as a highly sensitive person. What I've done in the past is I'll just yes people to get them to shut up. In my real life, I'm not really good at conflict. I don't like conflict at all in person, usually, unless it's one of those weird hormonal days and I'm jerseying it up or I'm hangry or you've just poked me hard enough this one time or enough times in a row that you make me snap. But usually I will just yes people. And sometimes I even find myself caught in this weird web of lies because I just want people to back off. And so I'll deny things or I'll just make excuses or I'll make up lies just to get you off my back because who are you to me? Usually it's strangers. That's the best way that I in the past knew how to protect myself and my energy. But honestly, that doesn't feel good either because I felt a lot of times like I was in denial of my relationship, like I was living this double life and it's sad, it's sad to do that. So my advice to you is to just not engage with those people. Don't talk to those people. And if it's somebody in your family, you need to be very strict about your boundaries. I'm an adult, this is what I decided to do. And I ask that you don't speak about it with me. And when they do, you have to empower yourself enough to say, listen, I'm not having this conversation with you. As highly sensitive people, we absorb it, but at the same time, at least for me, I can stand up to my family because it's my family. It's not some stranger having conflict with me. And with strangers, you shouldn't have to talk about it. But use this as an experience to find your voice. Use this as an experience to stand up for what you believe is right. And you're not gonna change people's minds most of the time. You're just not, and that's okay. This is a good exercise to figure out a way to be comfortable with that, to be comfortable with not pleasing everybody, not absorbing everybody else's pain, to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's not easy, it's hard. I've had to do it on multiple occasions. I still have to do it. So many times I see comments on my YouTube videos. In a split second, I have to choose. Am I going to let this ruin my day? Am I gonna attack this person back? Am I gonna lash out in anger? Which is usually, when it comes to Adam, that's usually my default. And then, usually, nine times out of 10, I decide it's not worth it, I will step away. I'll delete the comment so I don't even have to see it anymore. I could just make believe it never happened and I can move on. It's up to you. You get to choose how you're going to respond to things, knowing until today, all of these years, you were today years old when you discovered that you don't have to let those comments hurt you the way that they have in the past. You don't have to ruminate, which means thinking and thinking and overthinking and picking apart every word of a conversation or a sentence that somebody had with you. You get to choose. You are today years old when you discovered that you get to choose your responses to that. You get to tell yourself, not today. Not today, brain. I'm shutting you off. Not today, heart. You know what, you poor little bleeding heart? We're gonna stop the blood. We're gonna put pressure on our wound. We're gonna put a Band-Aid over that. And we're just gonna Breathe it out and let it go. If you guys like this, if you got something out of it, let me know what you got in the comments below. If you're interested in what my family was really thinking about my relationship, click that video up there. And then also, if you're not already subscribed, I would so appreciate if you did that. You can click the little circle there, or you can, of course, as always, click the little red box below. I love you guys. Oh, and give me a thumbs up, please. I would really appreciate it. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.